الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد سبحانه وتعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان وامرأته حمالة الحطب في جيدها حبل من مسد وامرأته his wife حمالة الحطب الحطب is the wood الحمالة is from hamala, the verb hamala, which means carries. Hamala yahmilu. And the one who carries, but carrying is not something that he does a lot, but just as anyone else carries, it was supposed to be said hamila. Hamila. But Hamala indicates an excessive carrying. Indicates an excessive carrying. For example, another example, Kadaba Yakdibu. Kadaba means he lied. So the one who lies at times, but lying is not something that, that he naturally does. You're supposed to say kathib and you don't say kathab. You say kathib. But if he was a liar, yani if lying was of his nature, then you say kathab. Kathab. Okay? So this is very important for us to understand the Arabic usages so we don't use a word out of context and for other than the meaning it was placed for in the beginning okay so you don't call someone who lied at once of whose nature is not to lie you don't call him kathab wadih you call him kathib kathib that means you lied in this particular point okay uh, حملة يحمل حامل حامل is one who carried something okay but it doesn't mean that he is a, a worker whose business is carrying واضح otherwise a worker whose business is carrying stuff you call him حمال حمال so this particular way of saying a noun okay is used for multiplicity, okay? Or for indicating that that is the nature of his. So, Hammalat al Hatab. Yani one who continuously carries what? The wood. The wood. Okay? Yani, it is said that is because she used to carry. Huh? The thorns and harmful wood, and she used to place it at night on the way of the Prophet ﷺ, in the way, in the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Wadih, that is Hammalat al Hadab. One who carries wood, thorns. See, it says here in the interpretation thorns of Sa'dan. Which she used to put on the way of the Prophet ﷺ, or used to slander him, or used to slander him. Wadih. <coughs> Tayyib, what does Hamalat al Hatab have to do with slandering? What does Hamalat al Hatab have to do with slandering? Huh. Tayyib, let us finish, and then we will see, inshaAllah, what it has to do with slandering. It says here, Fiji diha. 
يعني in her neck في جيدها حبل من مسد in her neck is a twisted rope of مسد of palm fiber now those ropes, certain ropes are made of palm fiber and they are known okay so she used to use this to carry whatever thorns she gathers to throw it in the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to harm him. Okay? And it is said also that Hablum min Masad, this is in the hellfire. Yani on her neck will be a rope of fire. And she will be carrying the fuel of fire. Just as she was in the dunya serving against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to annoy him and to harm him, she will be a servant for the hellfire to gather its fuel and feed it. Well then, because we have uh, a principle. This principle says, al min jinsi al The recompense is according to the deed. So just as you have done, you shall see. Yani, you will get a punishment that suits your sin. That suits your sin in the dunya. Okay? So for example, it is recorded that uh, one of the punishments is that one will be in a river of blood and whenever he tries to swim to shore uh, an angel fetches a rock and throws him with that rock in his mouth so he goes back to the middle of the river of blood and he tries whenever he tries to swim to shore again the angel will do the same so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he asked, who is this, O Gabriel? He said, this is the one who eats usury, who eats a riba. And the riba is the rights of people. So, you see the blood and how the sin and how the punishment is suitable to the sin that he used to do. And this is not only in the hereafter, even in this dunya. There are sins which you do and Allah tests you with a similar punishment. For example, if you slander the people and you accuse them of that which they are innocent of, you accuse them, for example, falsely and without evident proof that they are fornicators. So sometimes of the, sometimes of the punishment of Allah is that He tests you in your own family. So He makes your own family fornicators. Why? Because of the slander that you used to do to people. <coughs> Allah never forgets the sin that you do. You forget. We forget. And because we forget, we don't understand that sometimes why or what did we do to deserve a punishment. But it is as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يَوْمَ إِذِي يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانِ وَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكَرُ As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Fajr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says يَوْمَ إِذِي يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانِ وَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكَرَ on that day, will men remember? But how will that remembrance then avail you? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said in Surah Al-Kahf, يَا وَيْلَتَنَا مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَظْلِمُ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah number 18, verse number 49, in the book, one's record will be placed in the right hand for a believer in the oneness of Allah and in the left hand for a disbeliever in the oneness of Allah. And you will see the mujrimun, fearful of that which is recorded therein. They will say, woe to us, what sort of book is this? that leaves neither a small thing nor a big thing, but has recorded it with numbers. And they will find all that they did, all that you did. The angel is writing every single movement of yours, every single word that you utter. They will find all that they did placed before them and your Lord treats no one with injustice. In another example, the slave who has not done any good in his life, on the Day of Judgment, there will be 99 records of his. Each record is as far as the eye can see. And all the sins are recorded there. And then he is brought to testify against his own self. Do you deny any of this? And he says, no, my Lord, I don't deny any of this. On that day, you will remember. But in this life, you don't remember. Some things you forget, and some things you think that, that are little, but they are not to Allah little. To Allah, they are great. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the incident of Surah An-Nur, the slander that happened to Aisha, says, you, while you utter it with your mouth, and you think that it is a little thing, but to Allah, it is big. To Allah, it is big that slander that you have that you have spoken of. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Qaf, remember that the two, which means of course, remember that the two receivers, recording angels, receive each human being, one sitting on the right and one on the left, to note his or her actions. Not a word does he or she utter, but there is a watcher by him ready to record it. These are angels. These are angels. And angels are, are following what was commanded by the... And they, they, they don't get tired of that. They don't get weary. They never stop. They don't sleep. They are slaves of Allah. لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون. They do not disobey Allah what He commands them, and they do what they are told, as Allah سبحانه وتعالى says. ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد. Not a word does he or she utter, but there is a watcher by him ready to record it. وجاءت سكرة الموت بالحق. And the stupor of death will come in truth. This is what you have been avoiding. And the trumpet will be blown. That will be the day whereof warning had been given. And every person will come forth along with an angel to drive him and an angel to be a witness. Then... Allah will say, huh? لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مِّنْ هَذَا فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ فَبَصَرْكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدٍ It will be said to the sinners, Indeed, you were heedless of this. Now we have removed from you your covering, and sharp is your sight this day. And even if you deny, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command, your mouth to be shut, and to be shut, and you will not be able to speak, and your own hands will witness against you. And Allah said this in the Quran. Allah said this in the Quran. Your own hands will testify against you. <coughs> your own skins, your own skins will speak. They will testify to everything that you have done. So be careful, especially those sins which are related to people's rights. 
If it be a sin, if there be a sin, then let it not be regarding people's rights. Because indeed, that day is a horrible day, horrifying day, a day that you have never seen before. A day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry like never before, and he will never get angry like he gets angry on that day, Yawm al as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. That day when the rights are taken even between animals, as the Prophet sallallahu said. As Allah will take the right of that, the goat which does not have a horn from that which has a horn. Even to that extent, it's a great day, a horrible day. And on that day, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَتَدْرُونَ مَنِ muflis Do you know who is he who is bankrupt? Al-Muflis to us is one who does not have a penny. It says Al-Muflis from my Ummah is the one who comes on the Day of Judgment with deeds as mountains. Mountains. Mountains of deeds. In prayer, probably 50 prayers a day. But what did the Prophet ﷺ say? But he comes and he has cursed so and so, and he has slandered so and so, and he has backbited so and so, and he has harmed so and so, and he has killed so and so, and he beat so and so. So this person comes and takes from his hasanat, and that person comes and takes from his hasanat, and that person comes and takes from his good deeds, and so on. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, that if he was out of good deeds, they, he, he, they, they, he, he takes from their bad deeds. There's no good deed to take. There's no money to give. On that day, there's no money to give. And some scholars said that that position or that case or that time is after you pass the sirat. That's over, the bridge over, over hellfire. You think you are saved. From the hellfire, behold, there are people you approaching from everywhere, approaching you from everywhere, telling you, Give me my rights, give me my rights. You have nothing to give them but your good deeds. That's all you own on the day of judgment. Okay. So this wretched woman, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, and said that she will be forever in the hellfire. Her and her husband. She was to she used to walk around with a namima. Yeah, a namima of who? Huh? Against who? Against the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The namima varies between those who are occupied with Islamic knowledge. It is not the same, and between those who are of knowledge, it is not the same. It is severe, more severe. Because if you slander the people of knowledge, not only are you harming yourself, you don't harm him by the way. Don't think that whoever you're slandering, you are harming him. But you are benefiting him. That's why one of the pious predecessors, when he heard that someone has backbitten him, he wrote to him saying, I thank you for your gift. And verily I have nothing to give you back in return. So it is you that's going to place on your back on the Day of Judgment something that you cannot stand. You have overburdened yourself by placing on your back those sins which you cannot get rid of. And verily it is recorded by the Prophet wasallam that there will be people coming on the Day of Judgment surprised of their records of good deeds. And they find in their records deeds which they never have done. And they will say, from where is this? We don't remember any of this, any of those deeds that we have done. So this is because of this person backbiting. And this person slandering. So you who have been slandered, don't, don't be mad. Don't be sad, be happy. Be happy 
because Allah is giving you plenty, plentiful means of good deeds without working, without doing anything. You're just sitting there, relaxed. You have your excuses. The people don't know your excuse. The people are slandering you day and night. You are happy. The, 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 the meter of records is running and you are just sitting there doing nothing. We have to clarify what is anemia. Because people have don't know what is anemia. Because if they know what anemia means, there will hardly be any trouble between people. That's because they are unaware of what anemia means and the proper definition Islamically of anemia that they don't know what's going on. They think what they're doing is something. That's why. A lot of people, even I have met myself, and whenever they mention people, they backbite people, I say, this is backbiting. They say, no, this is not backbiting. It's not backbiting. Some say, it's true what I say about him. It's true, he does that. Some, some would say, I would say it in front of his face. Okay, that's when you say it in front of his face. But when you don't, it's still a backbiting. So what is Annamima? Annamima is from the verb Namma. Yanummu and Yanimmu. Yani it is both transitive and intransitive. Okay? What is meant by Annamima? I'll jump to the Islamic meaning. Because the linguistic meaning we do elsewhere. Islamic meaning of Annamima. And Namima generally means the following exposing exposing what is hateful to be exposed. Exposing what is hateful to be exposed. Pay attention carefully. Yes, you will not find it except after hard efforts in searching. Because these are from the classical books themselves. These are not from the anywhere from the internet. Exposing what is hateful to be exposed. Whether the one who hated it was the one spoken about. Or the one spoken to, or the carrier himself. Understand? Exposing what is hateful to be disposed, whether the one who hates it is the one carried to, or carried about, or the carrier, the carrier of the tail. Because Namima is carrying tail carrying. Okay? Explain now. So, for example, you have heard someone speaking about someone. Okay? Saying, for example, that uh, I heard someone do so and so. Or I saw someone doing so and so. I saw someone putting his money into his pocket. Namima. Namima. How is it Namima? Because this person that you are speaking about, would he like this to be exposed to someone else? No, he wouldn't. This is not just about the one who spoke has spoken about, no. But even the one who spoken to, if he did not like it, it's considered Namima. Okay? So for example, someone sat in a gathering and he... Uh, heard the people speaking about someone. So he went and carried that tale to someone else. Okay? Now, if that someone to whom he has carried the tale disliked it, why are you telling me such stuff? I don't need to know per this person's, this person's uh, personal business. This is in the case that the one who's carried to hates it. Okay? So carried to, and then we said what? Carried? About. Yani if the one 
whom you're speaking about or whom the people spoke about hates it. Okay? Like if, you're, if you were watching, and I see a lot of people do this, they observe people, they see you, their movements, and they fish for their mistakes. And whenever the, something happens, which is a part of their personal business, and sometimes people even peek inside people's homes from the windows, and say, oh, I saw the man, uh, for example, uh, beating his wife, or I saw the man, etc. Okay? So, if you carry this to someone else, that man would like it or not, his personal business, answer, no. So this is considered namina. Even if the one, hate, the one who is carrying the tail hated it, how is this? Could someone explain to me this one? The, the scholar said, even if the one carrying the tail, if he hated it, how is that? Hmm. Think, because this is it happens everywhere. It's not easy to. It's not difficult to. No, 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 no. The one who's carrying the tail, the, the the slander is not. The namima is not about him, but he's carrying it. Understand? Huh? It's about someone whom he loves. Ah, Someone whom he loves. Let's say this person heard something said about someone he loves. So he went to that loved one and he told, and he told him angrily, angr angrily for him. And he's angry for him. And he said, you know what? That man whom you know, he said this and this about you. He said this and that about you. This is called an amina. This is considered an amina. Okay? I'm not done yet. Whether that which is exposed are words or actions. Yani, for you to go to someone and say, so and so said so and so about you. Or actions. As to go to someone and, 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 to, and say, someone did this plotting against you, for example. That's an act. So whether it is regarding words or acts. Okay? Whether it is direct or indirect. Blunt, plain, clear, or it's not. It's by indications, hints. That's considered amima as well. Okay? And whether that which is carried is something shameful or not, whether that which is spoken about, which you spoke about, or which you carried about someone else, if it's a, a, something shameful or not, even if it's not a shameful thing, he's handling his own personal business, it's not a shameful thing, but if you carry it to others, that's considered a meme. Understand? And the one who's doing the namima is called namma. <coughs> namma. And the one carrying the namima, who is the namma, hmm, it's not necessarily that he was sitting in a <coughs> gathering and he heard people speaking about someone and he carried that tail. No. Even if he asked, in order to carry what he asked about to others, that's considered an amina. That means if he went and asked others, and how much this happens, and this is the at its peak in our time, when people approach others and ask them about people's personal business, they want to expose it. Of course, they ask and they are answered, and they take, oh, really? It goes to someone else and someone else he tells him that yes someone told me that he did that and did this and and etc it goes on and it goes on and mashallah hundreds of sins recorded for who for the first one and the rest of course it's accumulating imagine 
Hmm? One word. That is why the Prophet Sallallahu said that a person could utter a single word of the wrath of Allah and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala writes for him his wrath until he meets him. It's not, it's not simple. It's not easy. So the one who does the namima is called an nammam You know what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about an nammam He said, لَا يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ نَمَّامٌ This authentic. The one who is doing namima shall not enter paradise. This does not mean that he is a, a disbeliever. But this usually means, in such contexts, that the person has to be punished. That means he has to enter hell. He's more likely to enter hell before getting to enter paradise. And I would like to mention a very important principle regarding rights. As to some, some people are so neglect, neglectful to the rights of people to the point that they say, if people don't forgive them, I say, they, they say, so what if you don't? Allah will forgive me. He said, no, who told you? Yes, Allah is all forgiving. But there are two types of sins. The sins which are not relating to people's rights, this is under the will of Allah. That means, what do we mean when we say under the will of Allah? That means Allah can forgive them. Okay? But Allah has decreed that those sins which are relating to people's rights, there's no forgiveness except the person who has that right forgives first. Be careful. The person has to forgive first. In order, that means one of, that's one of the conditions of forgiveness, that the one the, ones, the one who has that right, he is to forgive first. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu said, if you have any right below, to anyone, make sure that you take it back in this dunya. He said that. He said, before there comes a day when there will be nothing to give back. No, no, no dirham to give back. On the day, it will be only, only deeds, only deeds. This is the meaning of a namima. Okay. Of course, there are many hadith, many verses regarding a namima. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said in Surah Al-Qalam. Allah is teaching us. Allah is explaining to us. But do we take that that guidance? Do we act upon it? Do we implement it really in our daily lives? In every word we speak? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Qalam, وَلَا تُطِعَ كُلَّ حَلَّافٍ مَّهِينٍ هَمَّازٍ مَشَّاءٍ بِنَمِينٍ What is مَشَّاءٍ بِنَمِينٍ? Slander going about with huh? a namima. Mashakin bin namim. Namim means namima. Going around with a namima. He says, don't obey him. That's why we will mention this in the six things you have to do when someone brings a namima to you. That, that's one of the things, is that you don't believe him. Because Allah declared him a fasiq. And you are not to believe a fasil, and you are to verify. We will mention the shahid. And what falls under this is the saying of Allah, وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةٍ لُمَزَةٍ also. And that hadith which says, لَا يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ لَمَّامٍ hmm? That is narrated by Muslim, hadith number 45, by the way. 45. And the Prophet Sallallahu once passed by two graves. And he said, إِنَّهُمَا لَيُعَذَّبَانَ Verily they are punished, they are tortured, they are being tortured. 
and they are not, not tortured in a big thing. He does not mean that these things are not big, because he said right after that, indeed it is big. But it wasn't big to their, in their eyes. They didn't find it a big thing. They find it something simple. It's just a word said to them. Hmm? Or it's just a, a, a small, an, an insignificant act to them. To them. He said, as for one of them, he used to go around with Namimah. This is in the grave. And as for the other, he wasn't screening himself from his urine. He wasn't screening himself from his urine. Either because he was uh, urinating, standing or whatever. Uh, means that uh, caused the urine to bounce back on your feet or on your legs, etc. Right. What to do when an anima comes to you? So basically, an namima is exposing secrets, exposing what is hidden. And the Prophet wasallam said that whoever follows the faults of his brother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will follow his faults, and whoever Allah, whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala followed his faults, he will expose him even if he was in the middle of his house, in the middle of his home. What to do when an anima comes to you? Number one, is that you don't believe him. Is that you do not believe him. Why? Because the one who carries around an anima is a fasiq. And the fasiq, the fasiq's testimony is rejected. Fasil's testimony is rejected. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed said in Surah Al-Hujurat, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu in jahakum fasiqun binaba'in fatabayyan. O you who believe if a fasiq, a wrongdoer, and the one who carries around the namima is a wrongdoer, an evildoer. In ja'akum fasiqum min abahim fatabayyanu. An tusibu qawman bi jahala fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadini. If any news of you, if uh, any news comes to you from a fasiq, then verify it. Lest you should regret. أن تصيبوا قوما بجهالة lest you accuse a people ignorantly and become regretful of what you have done number two is that you forbid him from his namima and that you advise him and you show him what a wretched act he's doing. You explain to him, this is Namima. Don't tell me anything about anyone. Except if it, if it was for a religious cause, that's something else. But what are the religious uh, excuses? To speak about someone, there are excuses. And we shall mention a part of that, inshallah. Why should you forbid him and advise him? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأْمُرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَأَنْهَا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ As in Surah Luqman, enjoin good and forbid evil, and this is evil. And indeed, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as in his sunnah, 
whoever of you saw an evil, let him forbid it. By his hands, if he can by his hands, by his hands for those who have authority, for those who have authority, if it's, if it's your own family, you can forbid by your hands. If it's the ruler, he can forbid by his hands. Or by whomever he appointed. Not you by beating someone, etc. or by killing someone, no. That you cannot do it by your hands in this case. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, if you can't by your hands, then by your tongue. Where did the tongue go? Hmm. Were you enjoying what is said? Laughing about it? Amused by it? Moved by it? Enjoying the slander? And your brother eating the flesh of his brother? Huh? This is what mostly happens, yes? Let's be honest. This is what mostly happens nowadays. No. And the most important part is what the Prophet ﷺ said after. If he couldn't uh, deny or uh, and he forbid him by his by his tongue, how does he forbid him? By his heart. How is that by the heart? Tell me. Huh? Uh, leaving, not witnessing the falsehood. That's how you deny by your heart. By your heart, you should hate it. Not enjoy it, not love it. You should hate it. And part of you hating it is leaving the evil. So if you pers the person is talking and you're explaining to him, you're giving nasiha, he's not listening, leave him. Go away from him. This is forbidden by your heart. Number three, <coughs> that he hates him for the sake of Allah. Yes, that he hates him for the, for the sake of Allah. And this, this does not mean that he hates him completely. No, he hates him for that sin of his. Because the Muslim is loved from an aspect, hated from another aspect. The sinner, I mean, the Muslim sinner. He is loved because of what Islam is there in him. But he's hated for any violation also that he does. And this is one of the firmest handholds, the firmest foundations of religion. As the Prophet said, One of the firmest foundations of religion is loving for the sake of Allah and hating for the sake of Allah. You hate this person, you love this person, why? For his money, for his wealth, because he's serving you, because he's serving you to your advantage. Uh, or you love him for the sake of Allah because he's obedient to Allah. So whoever loves for other than the sake of Allah, then that <coughs> thing, when it goes away, the love will go away. But whoever loves for the sake of Allah will be always with you, and he will be sincere to you for the sake of Allah. Sincere to you means that he will be truthful and honest with you. Not everything that you do or say, he says, yes, 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 yes. No, but if he sees that you're doing something wrong, the true friend, the true one who loves you for the sake of Allah will tell you, no, don't do this, barakallahu feek. I love for you what I love for myself, and this is wrong, what you're doing. Father, that you hate him for the sake of Allah, because he is indeed hateful to Allah, and you have to hate him about Allah hates, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicated in his book that he hates those who are carrying tales. Fourth, and it keeps on getting more exciting. Fourth is that you don't think bad of your brother, who's spoken about of course, that you don't think bad of him. Huh? And this is based on you not believing what is said. Based on what you believe what is said about so and so? Have you seen it? Have you witnessed it with your own eyes? <coughs> hmm? Even in the issue of slandering, of adultery, hmm? even there is an incident that happened in the, day, in the times of Umar. And they, you know, 
a person accuses his wife of adultery, what, uh, what is needed for him to do? Huh? Bring how many witnesses? Four. Four. So on that time, three witnesses came. And the fourth huh, was not a hundred percent sure. But the first three witnesses, Omar, you know what he said to them? He said, have you seen that very private part go inside that private part? Huh. To that extent. To that extent. So this is the same type of question that everyone is asked whom claims that someone else did so and so have you seen him with your own eyes doing so and so or is it that you just heard about it well what you heard is not what like what you see and if that turns out to not be true even if it was true in both cases you are sinning even if it's true why because even if it's true, it's a namima. And if it's not true, it is buhtan, slandering. In both cases, you're a loser. What, what, what do you get out of this? What do you get out of this? So, the fourth is to not think bad of your brother, because this is what Allah commanded you to do. Where? In Surah Al-Hujurat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuha al-ladhina amanu jtanibu kathiran min al-dhan inna ba'da dhanni ithn O you who believe, avoid much suspicion. Really, some suspicion are sin. Avoid it. Suspicion is no, no evidence. You don't have physical evidence. You don't know that person might have an excuse even if he did something wrong. He might have an excuse. And even if he didn't have an excuse, he might have done it mistakenly. No, it has to be, no, 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 he meant bad. No, he's evil. No, he's that and that. And then we claim we are Muslims. And then we claim we are together, holding on together. When we treat each other just like a Muslim treats a non-Muslim. I wish it was that way as well. But it's the opposite. Number five, that what is said about whoever is slandered or whoever the Namim is done with, done to, that what is said should not drive you to investigate. That's number five. That what is carried to you should not drive you or cause you to investigate and to search the matter. Why? Where's the, where's the proof to that? And look at the spectacular order of the word of Allah. Look. Ponder. For Allah's sake. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Hujurat. He said, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. Avoid much suspicion, rarely some suspicion is sin. Listen, listen. This suspicion, which is sin, if you act upon it, what will happen? Allah said right after that, right after forbidding you to follow much suspicion, He said, and spy not. Because he who thinks bad about a person, it will drive him to do what? To spy. Then after he spies, and he gets what feeds his desire, and his anger, and his wish to revenge. And Allah knows if that revenge is based upon certainty or not, maybe it's based upon another namima as well. Huh? It says, And don't backbite one another. See, this leads to that, and that leads to this. Spectacular order. Word of Allah. أَيُحِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتًا فَكَرِهْتُمُ 
Would one of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother? You know, the animal specialists, they say the only one, they said, Allah Alam is true or not, they say the only animal who eats the flesh of his brother is the dog. And if that is proven, then it's resembling this backbiter by a dog, with a dog. Would one of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother? You would hate it, so hate backbiting. And fear Allah, verily Allah is the one who forgives and accepts repentance and most merciful. Hmm. Six, the last one, but not least, is that you don't, if, is that you're not pleased for yourself with what you have hated for your brother to do. What does that mean? Is that you're not pleased for yourself with what you hated in your brother. That means you don't carry the namima as well, just as your brother has, has done. Don't be like him. <coughs> huh? Is that you're not pleased for yourself with what you were, uh, with what you hated in your brother. You hated that he carried to you an amima, correct? Don't carry it. Huh? You might just go and say, oh, someone told me something about someone. No, don't do what he's doing. Don't follow him in his evil. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam resembled an namima to what? Huh, who knows? Resembled an namima to what? Fire, 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 fire. Huh. To? Bad odor? No. Hmm. Huh? No. Wish. Far worse than what you have mentioned. And Namima is resembled to what in our Sharia? Huh? Naam? I can't hear you. Huh? Huh? What do you say? Zina? No, no, no. Even worse than Zina. No. No, but close. <coughs> resembled. I didn't say it's like what. I, said, I didn't say it's like doing what. It resembled it to one act. What's that act? One one name I want. One word for that act. Huh. <coughs> killing? No, worse than killing. Huh? huh? No, no, worse. No, that's too extreme. <laughs> no. uh. You will not believe, but if I say, you might know what's the relevance. Huh? No, 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 no. A sihr. A sihr. A sihr? How is that related to a sihr? It's light. Huh? A sihr causes light between two. One of the things which sihr does is separating between a man and his wife. Or separating between two in general. And Allah said this in the Quran. And we should continue, inshallah, after the Adhan.